your time starts now. Oh, oh. All right, let's go. I am genuinely nervous. Genuinely nervous. I think they're definitely all feeling the pressure, but serves them right after what they put us through. Gaz, what are you doing? I'm going to use the cauliflower, the monkfish, maybe make a date puree, something along those lines. Right. Come on, Gary. Monkfish is not something you see every day. It's a beautiful fish, actually. Really beautiful fish. No wonder you wanted the back area. Hey? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I told you, didn't I? Like... Okay, let me think, let me think. Should I roast this on the bone? Shannon, what are you actually doing? Can you I'll tell me? I'll let you me? know in another five minutes. I'll let oh. you know. <laughs> I think Shannon is bumbling a bit, but no doubt he'll use those two hats to his advantage and pull something out of one of them. Shannon, how are you going? Uh, at this stage... Yeah, good, good. I'm a little bit concerned. Are you using all these ingredients? Uh, at this stage, no. OK. But uh, I, I plan to. So, Shannon, what's the dish? Crusted monkfish oh. with a beautiful broth. That's, that's what I'm doing. So, so you're just going to put some water and miso together and bring in some miso <laughs> broth with some monkfish? I'm not leaving my secret out here, Matt. Not, not, not going out. I, no. You know, normally when a contestant mm -hmm. says that to us, at least, it normally means they have... No, no idea. idea. <laughs> I'm not playing this game. I know. So... Good luck, Shannon. <laughs> Hi. What ingredients are you using today? You know what I'm going to try doing a little um, cannelloni. I'm going to make a brandad for it out of the monkfish cauliflower miso. Okay. I'm going to try and use the kohlrabi as the pasta sheet. We'll see how we go. George is making a brandad for his cannelloni filling. It's a Mediterranean spread. It's usually made with salted cod, olive oil, and potatoes. And you've done that before? Uh, not with monkfish. He's using monkfish, which means he's going to have to salt it to get that traditional brandade flavour. Do you think that's a good idea? Um, personally, no, but Let's go. Um, we'll let you think about that one. Whoa. Today's Mystery Box showcases the palette. It's all about balance of flavours. For me, it's important for Marco to taste my dish today because the more I can impress him, I feel like the more he's going to want to invest in me. They always say in life you have to have a little bitter if you're going to taste the sweet. Or is it the umami or the salt or the sour? 30 minutes to go. Come on, push, push, push. Come on, move. Let's Come go. On. crunch time. I need to get things happening. The judges told me to scrap the yogurt sauce and start again, pretty much. I've got to try and come up with a new dish. It occurs to me that I can salt the pork using the anchovies we've been given as sort of a marinade kind of rub on the pork. I'll get on to making some parmesan crisps. I'm going to go with that for a crunchy element. It's starting to feel like I've got a bit of a dish here. I've got two elements now, which I'm happy with. And the challenge for me is going to be pulling it all together in the time frame. The judges are only going to taste the top five dishes today. I really, really, really want to get my dish up there. I really love the parmesan, and that's going to go well with the pork. And I think that kind of salty umaminess will be really nicely set off by the bitter flavours in the end. I've big, bold flavours is my thing. I love eating them, so I love to make them. I'm worried that Marco's refined palate might not enjoy a parmesan crumb, but um, I need to just follow what, you know, my gut tells me. I need to stand out of the crowd today. How's it going? Pretty good. What are you making? A uh, pan-seared pork loin with parmesan crumb and braised endive. Parmesan pork chop. Endive. Yeah. Good. He likes the flavours in there. That is, you know, just a huge confidence boost. Good luck. Today I'm making endive cups with a sticky date pork filling. This dish is my take on Sanchoy Bao and I'm going to use those perfectly shaped little endive cups to serve the yummy sticky date and pork filling. I love cooking with endive. It's a beautiful vegetable. It has a very bitter flavour. Today I'm using it fresh and keep it nice, colourful and crispy. 
I really want to make a beautiful salty crackling for my dish. So I rub salt into the cracks of the skin. It needs to be perfectly crackly and crunchy. I want this dish to be fully packed with so many different textures. I just hope I pull it off. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. Your time's up. Well done. Oh, well done. Yay. Yeah, it looks pretty. Oh, you stuffed them. Yes. Yeah, cute. Oh, uh, I'm not happy with it. Looks good. What did you make? I did a weird dessert. Weird desserts are great. Yeah. There's nothing like a mystery box from the past to get the creative juices flowing at the start of the week. And this challenge is all about getting tasted, isn't it? The top three. That's what we're looking for. The first dish we'd like to taste belongs to... When the judges call out my name, I'm, I'm ecstatic. I worked really hard on this dish today, and this might win me the advantage today. Looks good, caught her eye. Certainly love those little tortellini, beautifully presented, but I think we're more curious about the fact that there's little surprises in there, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. So, what's the dish? It's a mystery tortellini, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had to use all eight ingredients. Um, it's probably like a Matthew special, really. Half the tortellini have uh, a grilled fig, and the other half of the tortellini have the blue cheese and apple with some star anise. See if it works. I'm just, I'm just going to try and get right one. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get one blue cheese and one fig. Pasta's deliciously thin, the tortellini are plump. I love that bacon and nut crumble. I think that's absolutely delicious, you know, bacony and kind of crunchy and a little sweet, which is beautiful. I love that blue cheese filling too, because I love the strength of flavour, the pungency. And I love this idea that, that when you approach this as a whole, rather than just tasting little bits, you're going to get that refreshing sweetness of the fig that's going to burst through. And when you come back to the blue cheese, you get that tang of blue cheese and that really lovely flavour of star anise, which works far better in this dish than it did in your previous version. And for me, I think that is the dish without flaws, which is very rare in this kitchen. Well done. I think what's great about this challenge is it isn't just something that, that, that you face in a restaurant, it's something people face yeah, at home the yeah, whole time. Yeah. We throw away in Australia about a third of the stuff, yeah, food we absolutely. buy, we throw away. So it's, it's important to think for home cooks about how you can use the stuff that you would normally want. Yeah. Seeing those ingredients today, instantly I just think of my grandma. You know, she'd get a chicken and she'd make a soup and then she'd roast it and never wasted anything. My grandma was an incredible cook. Um, every time we went there, there was just some sort of incredible pastry for us to eat. When she passed away, I was devastated. She, she was a big part of me. I feel her presence with me a lot. Amelia, what's cooking? Um, I'm doing a messed up upgo lemon oil. Messed up upgo lemon oil? Yeah. Upgo lemon oil being egg and lemon soup? Yep. Okay. So, gonna make like a little meatball. Obviously, got no lemon, but I'll be using vinegar to get the acidity in there. Mm. Yeah, look, I'll be very interested how it's gonna turn out with vinegar. I yep. mean, my, my mother makes it and it's very simple it's eggs, it's lemon. Yep. It's good chicken stock, yeah. it's rice. And, and you know, That's why it's I'm, up. I'm interested to see. Yeah. I'm not saying it's wrong or right. Uh, preferably lemon. Yeah. And what are you going to do with those meatballs? Just fry them off. And are these for the emulsion or are you just wasting no, I use those? Whole eggs. Those are just wasted. So they're wasteful. So you're using up leftovers and creating more leftovers. Gary's right. I shouldn't be creating waste in a waste challenge, so I have to think of a way to use those egg yolks. Today for the Mystery Box Challenge, we've got 60 minutes to make a really tasty sort of staff meal with the ingredients which are essentially our offcuts and scraps from the Press Club kitchen. 
Kira, 25 minutes down and you're standing here, relaxing, <laughs> yes. enjoying everyone else going hell for leather. Yes. <laughs> now tell me the dish you're making. Um, so these are parmesan meatballs yep. um, and there's some apricot in there to add some sweetness. Mm -hmm. I'm making a stock here for my soup that they're going to go in. Yep. Um, I'm going to fry an egg for the top, make some crisps and, and add some green and just have a nice layer of stuff so, on top. Meatball soup with a lo lovely crispy garnish. Yep. Soup without bread. How nice with a bit of bread. <laughs> my mind doesn't think like that. <laughs> you see, that's the problem. What I don't want you yeah. in this situation is standing here and when we announce the five dishes, yeah. yours doesn't quite make it. Because I think yeah. it's a great dish. When you've got time, yeah. think about what we can do with it. Okay. Even a snack few. I know I'll it's carbs. <laughs> no. Carbs are alright. Ten seconds to go. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Tools down, your time's up. <laughs> Like there was ever any doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to go and I was in all sorts of trouble. <laughs> well done, Reynolds. Savory. Yeah. Really hope that this is just one of the top three. Uh, I'm a bit worried about the acidity and how the the density of the macadamia puree. What a great cook! Everybody took that very seriously. I wonder why. Heston. A bit of inspiration, that's what it was all about, and your historical mystery box. We're excited about this tasting. We picked three. And the first one up is... Reynolds. You happy? Yeah, I'm really happy. I'm really stoked, actually. She's really surprised. I can't, I can't even process in my mind that Heston's here and um, just did something different today. It's made wallaby with uh, macadamia puree, some finger limes, warrigal greens, and uh, quantongs. Let's taste. <laughs> I think the balance of the dish is pretty beautiful. I think it's, it's, it's got finesse to it. You've nailed it with the finger limes, the macadamia nuts. It's just a really well-balanced dish. Thank you. Yeah, well done. I, I think you've done a smashing job here, because I think what you've done is you've cooked that beautifully. I think you've done a great job. Thanks, guys.